I'm Josh. I'm one of the members of the DevOps team. And what we'll do here is I'll walk you through some of the monitoring solutions that we offer. And um, I'll start by saying that this is something that we really recommend that you put in um, as, as your network is set up um, right from the beginning. Because this gives you some really good insights into how the network itself works, um, how both the nodes and the network work. It also ensures that you have a really professional, high quality network that is reliable and stable, um, both, both now as well as when the chain grows in the long term. Um, so we'll start by running through one of our production dashboards um, and we'll talk about how we look at things to see if everything's okay. Um, so just sort of like a quick status check when you have a really early morning webinar and you kind of just wake up a few minutes earlier just to make sure everything's progressing well. Um, so right, we'll start with um, that and then we'll move on to some of the metrics and we'll talk about how we use them as indicators to solve potential problems. So this is our main table dashboard, which we use, um, as you can see, there's, there's a lot, all our production nodes over here. So we run them on pretty much every major network. Um, and we've got um, goalie validators, mainnet, ring B and Robston. And this particular one, the goalie validator is very important because we need to make sure that um, this is always up. Um, the network depends on us for this case. Um, so what we like to see right off the bat is lots of green. Everything is, everything's humming along nicely. Um, so things to take into account is the uh, peer limit used. Um, so we see all our nodes have connected to their max. Um, there's blocks coming in on a fairly frequent basis and none of our nodes are lagging behind. Um, so the next one is the fast sync progress. So when you start up a new node, um, this shows you the insight into the world state, how it progresses as the nodes come up to the chain head. We don't have any in here at the moment, um, but when we do, they automatically pop in here. So the next thing I'll talk about is um, the block time and, block, and blocks behind. Um, this is really important for enterprises um, because, um, well, part of it is with this, the higher the number of peers, as well as you need to see that um, blocks coming in fairly frequently and nothing's left behind. Um, this gives you strong confidence that as your chain grows, it's, it's more stable. Um, okay, so with the block time, we'd like to see things, um, blocks coming in around about the 10, 15 seconds, nothing sort of staying around the one, two minutes. Occasionally we do see things over there. Um, so say for example, when the Robston, you know, has miners or nodes drop, we see things. Um, but if they're constantly staying at the minute, two minute mark, that's a red flag and something we should investigate. Um, the blocks behind typically has spikes of maybe two or three, depending on when they've been sampled. Um, this is normal, not too bad. If they sort of start staying at three and above, that's really, really a bad thing. And we need to investigate and see what's going on over there. Um, so the lovely thing about Prometheus and Grafana is it not just gives you uh, insights into uh, the metrics that BISA provides it. You can also put in um, exporters from the systems itself. So in this case, we've got a node exporter, which gives us insights into the disk usage, um, just to ensure that we don't run out of disk space. Um, so everything's humming along nicely over here. No alerts have been triggered, and I'll touch on alerts in a few minutes. Um, so the last thing that we really um, use as key indicators is the CPU and memory usage as well as the garbage collection time. Um, so what we'd like to see over here is this nice, steady, spiky kind of growth in both the memory and CPU. Um, if we see a steady rise in things, that's a flag that something's not quite right, not quite working as expected, and something we should really look at. Um, the other thing is if you run out of memory, uh, you'll see garbage collection getting kicked in quite a bit. It will also cause a rise in CPU, and this is an indication that we either need to give um, the JVM process more memory, or we need to look at getting a different instance. Um, so now I'll talk about alerts. So Grafana and Prometheus give you um, the native ability to um, create metrics, uh, sorry, to, to create alerts, and you can you know, version control them like you do other things. Um, private keys, for example, keep them nice and safe. Um, but the lovely thing about this is, say you have um, something like block time over here, and you wanted to create an alert directly within the GUI, you can. So go into edit, uh, go into alerts, you can create alert. 
And you get to see sort of the query that's happening over here. So you can say, I want an alert um, to be able to evaluate every minute. And when the average goes above, let's say 60 seconds, um, that will trigger an alert. And so you see a nice little red line that pops up over here. Um, and anything above this is obviously bad. Anything below, nice and good. Um, so all the alerts in Grafana and Prometheus, they can be you know, trickled into um, Slack, PagerDuty, uh, Victor Ops, anything like that. Um, but you can do simple things just like mail, and you can send them to self, uh, various bits and pieces like that. Um, so to do a quick recap, it's um, really important to set up monitoring so you get a good sort of overview and you get visibility into the network itself. And in the long term, this really ensures that you have a nice stable network that is reliable um, as the chain grows and you can keep developing apps